अभी मैं ही केस होता है कई कंपनी में ट्राई कर रहा हूँ जिसमें टॉप बैंक के साथ क्या हुआ भाई वो ड्रॉप आउट नहीं ना ऐसा चेहरा मेरा नहीं बता रहे हैं वो ड्रॉप आउट होएगा तो मेरा क्या है सवा सात से मैंने नहीं स्टार्ट होगा स्टार्ट होगा और सब कैंड भी है मैंने कैंड तो right good evening and thank you all for your presence really means a lot uh, so we started off uh, you know uh, gathering this whole group uh, what we got ideally 8 7 8 days to you know gather this group here so really thank you so much for making our time uh, and hopefully we should have a good discussion here uh, i just want to introduce we have uh, anish dhavan anish is the sales director for enterprise and public sector pan india at comvol so anish welcome here uh before we begin and start off the session a quick introduction from each one of you in terms of your name organization and your current responsibilities i guess to you know just break the ice and then we can open up the forum for discussion anyone please tejveer okay. let me go first okay. aditya vardhan uh, chief information security officer jindal steel and power thank you aditya welcome Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I am Vishal from Bajaj Capital. So I am taking care of entire IT infra part. Thank you. Welcome, Vishal. Great. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sanket Rumani. I am a partner with PwC. Uh, partner with the risk consulting practice with focus on cyber security and data protection. Great. Welcome, Ankit. Hi, Tejveer Bhogal. Uh, part of the Bennett Cosman Company Limited, uh, which is the Times of India Group. I head the governance alliances and program management for IT. Welcome, Tejveer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Manish Manjwani. I'm the CTO of Shiram Auto Mall <coughs> and the group companies. Uh, I look after overall technology for the group company. Thank you. Welcome, Manish. Hi, everyone. This is Vipul Agarwal from Make My Trip. I'm heading security and compliance piece over there. Welcome, Vipul. Good evening, everyone. Vikram Jit Singh, partner with KPMG, cyber security focus. <coughs> uh, I'm national leader for data security services. Maybe a relevant topic. Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome, Vikram Jit. Right. Thank you so much. You know, so uh, I will quickly set the context for this uh, evening here. We are talking about data resilience, data protection, and you know, security again is a key topic for enterprises across sectors. So uh, I'll quickly uh, let you know what have been my conversations with IT business and security leaders like yourselves. Uh, so I found that there are four key areas that they have been dealing with. The first is how they rewire, reshape themselves. Uh, you know, try to take advantage of a digital cloud based mobile centric world out there uh, bring advanced technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things inside their operations the second is how they can leverage massive amounts of data and bring advanced analytics into the business not just in an algorithmic sense but uh, more in a human sense so that people have the capacity to use it the third is how they can leverage the digital resources out there to innovate for their customers create new products new services and at times new business models to drive growth and the fourth which encompasses you know the points that i've raised and it touches all these three areas is security data protection at all times is critical <clears throat> and more so in today's age where on one hand we are seeing enterprises embrace new technologies uh, you know to drive efficiencies uh you know drive innovation innovate for their customers uh, enable new works uh, new new models of working on the other we have adversaries or the uh, the hackers you know who are also stepping up the attacks on businesses now in such a scenario uh, how does one protect the data uh, and you know there have been lot of instances where enterprises have been attacked in the recent times and you know the list can go on but you know i'll just open up the forum try to get your views initially in terms of what has been your approach to data security and what are the challenges that you face two minutes should be good enough to you know set the context and then we can look at specific questions here anyone please 
Let's keep it free flowing, you know, rather than me choosing uh, somebody to speak. I think data is everywhere, which I feel over there. Like if you have an environment where is a hybrid environment, where you have cloud over there, you have your on premise over there. So first you need to set out the boundaries over there. Like what are you, what is your boundary? What is your perimeter over there? What are the different type of applications? What are the legacy applications? What are the you can say shadow IT applications over there? And how you can define that which applications are needed for business? How you can conceptualize that application? And how you could take, can take which data resides in which sort of applications over there. So this is the biggest challenge we see. We see a lot of data over there in forms of different structures. So having data visibility, you know, what data resides Data visibility, where? governance, on top of it. Right, right. Any challenges? Uh, Absolutely. Around? Like, at, for example, at MakeMyTV, we collect lots and lots of data over there. This multi-form is structured data and structured data. So how do we classify the data over there? And with the volume of data, how we can ensure that we are not storing any PI information in any sort of form over there. That is another challenge over right. there. And again, the solutions over there, which works traditionally well onto the, you can say, legacy sort of environment over there. But once we come to a cloud and when we talk about the petabytes of data over there, how do we do that efficiently without increasing the cost? <coughs> that is one of the driving factors before choosing any sort of solution in order to safeguard our environment, in order to safeguard our data. Right, right. So some points, you know, we'll we'll touch upon them. Manish, so I'm making note. I'm sure you are doing as yes, yes. as well. Yeah. Right, Manish. Yeah. So I mean, like when you said, you know, data is. Please use the mic. I guess you know that will help okay. you to. I mean, record that one conversation okay, sure. at least properly. So the data is everywhere. Uh, we have different sources of data collection. Uh, be it you know what what our users are doing to you know our business data to to even the devices it is coming from be it IoT devices to, to you know variety of sources are there. Now uh, you know the the data from a you know uh, conservatively you know sharing is something that's the first step sort of a thing uh, and then uh, coming to you know having a kind of a layer to protect the whole thing. I mean. Uh, the collection to the application, the supply chain to you know uh, to, to to even when we are sharing the data with our clients, third party through the APIs to to everywhere you know all the you know touch points of the data sharing exchanging uh, you know and then the layer which is sort of uh, you know protecting individually I mean separately and. Uh, you know what we the, the kind of a I mean I would say that the, the kind of a layer that we have got in between to protect some tools and stuff like that also uh, it has got it is it is largely got a kind of a complex sort of a, you know implementation involved in it it's it's not a straightforward it requires extensive you know uh, skill and uh, and also skill along with uh, you know trained skill. Uh, teams that's right. the biggest challenge and uh, with that I think a lot of other challenges uh, pop up basically so I think that's where largely we are facing that you know tools and right implementation right frameworks for the tools what to cover what the scope and the training sort of thing yeah right right yes sir. so uh, I think in continuation to what um, uh, another friend said, uh, probably two points which, which I would like to raise. Uh, the first point is that data is probably one thing which is very, very close to human factor, right? And uh, the enterprises, and probably I will talk about from a manufacturing standpoint, right? Uh, I think that that maturity is still not there. So while there is a there is a sense or the understanding and acknowledgement that the data should be secure, but probably that should start from the next person, not from me, right? So that has been a <laughs> that has been the the one of the bigger challenge or probably the biggest challenge uh, when it comes to data protection part of it, right? So um, and the number two is that there is a growing realization with every technology uh, provider that data security is essential, right? So the technologies are coming up with certain, with the native data protection thing. But if you look at from a, from a CISO standpoint, what it means is that uh, I eventually, uh, you know, a few years back, we were talking about centralization of the data protection technologies, right? The holistic one where one technology can provide 
data protection across different layers. But now we as a CISO are sitting at different, different touch points, say a particular, uh, uh, probably the Googles of the world are providing their own security or the data protection. And then eventually as a CISO, you are supposed to exploit that investment, get the best ROI. And then you are not getting the holistic one because then for endpoint, you will end up getting something else, right? right. So effectively what the use case was to, to kind of combine to have a single pane of truth from a data protection now again getting into different, different silos, right? So these are two practical challenges which I do believe, uh, you know, at this moment, yeah. Right, right, right. Yes, Okay, I'll, I'll go next. I think we have had some practitioner views coming but let me bring some consultant view. Uh, so classic, uh, I'm sure everyone has heard this, for digital transformation, you add technology to a broken process, you are running to a failure quickly. Absolutely. Similar thing here, when we have, start having discussion data security, lots of people start jumping on solutions, so then I'll bring TLP, CASB, or whatever solution. I think a uh, slightly different approach that we usually recommend is, we need to solve this at three levels. As in, we need to solve it at why, we need to solve it at what, and then how. How is the part which is on solutions, but then why and what needs to come first. There's no disagreement today. The data is the new oil, as in, no disagreement. <coughs> but then if you really get to slightly next double-click details of it, every organization would have their own nuances. Sure. So the why would be different. What do they need to protect? And what are their both crown jewels and use cases? That needs to be understood. So that, that will define the why for you. And then we'll get into the uh, what part and what would really be driven through the governance processes. Who is the data owner? How are we defining the custodians and all those things? Then we get into the how part, whether we are defining DLP, uh, discovery has to happen. All the life cycle approaches has to happen. Discovery has to happen, classification has to happen. You need to have right protection technologies coming in. You need to also get into other enterprise controls. You need to retire data. You need to uh, secure, purge. Various use cases would be there for data, what you need to do. But all that would get defined once you have done the tree right. Right, right. So yes, sir. Yeah. Let me yes, just complement to what Vikram just said and uh, give another dimension to the entire discussion. So we have a legacy of about 185 years. Right. And we are in the business of creating content. It is not that we are acquiring content from anywhere, but we create, we produce, and that's a daily affair, right? And we have petabytes and petabytes of data. So fundamentally, the challenge is altogether different, number one. Number two, the, today, as we talk about digital transformation, today we are creating that content on in multiple domains, right? whether it's a public cloud, whether it's a private cloud, or the homegrown legacy applications that we have, where the content is being stored or being churned out on a day-to-day -day basis, which is fundamentally the publishing business, right? So that's the second aspect of it. What do we do? What are the challenges? The first part is the threat intelligence. To answer or to, you know, add fuel to the fire, what mm. Vikram just said, what? What are those challenges? Do we have that threat intelligence today? Yeah, that's a larger question that we are grappling with. Okay, we know as to what data we want to protect, but do we have that visibility as to what those threats are, number one. And number two, of course, resilience. How do we build a resilience or a platform or a, you know, or a framework by virtue of which we are able to cater to all these challenges under one single umbrella. And for that, I think uh, we are struggling with two things. One, the right skill set, internal to the organization. Or second, the partner ecosystem, where we see that even partners are probably, you know, it's a, a mile away. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, so skill sets are a big challenge, you know, especially when you talk about uh, security and, uh, you know, big companies are facing that challenge. But you, you touched upon the point of uh, threat intelligence, uh, you know, so that's, that's very critical to have visibility of what are the threats, how do you, you know, protect yourself from those threats as well, right? Uh, yes, Ankit. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> we're talking about what challenges we are facing today, right? I just wanted to take a step back. Now, why are we facing these challenges, right? We know digital transformation is happening, right? We are 
creating a lot of content by using AI, ML, a lot of generative AI <coughs> technologies today, right? Uh, there is a lot of cloud adoption, right? So essentially what is happening is that the attack surface is increasing, right? Now the attack surface has increased, but we are still largely have traditional security models in place, right? We have a perimeter-based security models with a layered security structure. Now this transition from perimeter-based security to user-centric security, right? Because the model is one there. That, that model, that shift is becoming a bit difficult, right? Because now we are not talking about having one framework, right? You have a framework for a cloud security. Somebody is talking about zero trust architecture. Then you have your regulatory compliances. So all of that shift is becoming essentially uh, difficult for the organizations. And that is what is posing challenges, right? Some organizations would have certain level of maturity where they know where the data is or what are their crown jewels or critical assets that they want to protect. But then how to protect it? Because that, you know, the attack, the, the, the surface is a bit different, right? So that's that's what is a key question that we, we, we need to answer today. What I Absolutely. Right, right. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. So as all friends said, there is multiple challenge to protect the data, and data is the important for all. So, just sir, clarify that. How, what, and uh, the theory options that we have to protect. But current situation, when we are just working on the hybrid environment, currently in house and the cloud, first we have to categorize the data. <coughs> Classification of data is very much important right. for every organization. Then after we have to do, how can we protect that data? So there is multiple type of data that all we already discussed. So such data that is not important for us, then why we protect such type of data? So we have to just clarification of the data, then after how can we protect? And just said, already response to that, the recovery of the data is very much important. The data is protected, you have taken the backup, but that backup is not working, that is very much problem for each and every one. So we also have to choose such product that is very much important for the organization. That is the uh, work for the organization when you are going to just restore. So I think so these are the such problem also and we also have to work on the such yes. solution. solutions. Right, so I, know, I guess uh, you've covered the points, visibility, privacy, uh, you know, skill sets again, right, getting the right tools, threat intelligence, uh, you know, Anish, so we have had that you know, opening round of uh, challenges on, on the table now. Uh, let me ask you, you know, how you've been interacting with enterprises across. What, what kind of challenges do you see that you know, they are facing and what are the threats that they really need to be cautious about? And maybe so, if you could answer some of the <laughs> challenges you know, that, that no, have been No, the challenges are very real and I will just build on, you kind of put it very nicely on what, why and how. The first thing is that, uh, like you said, uh, your own awareness of where all you're creating data is, a, is in itself an issue. And it's my experience of having talked to multiple customers and we've seen it getting, you know, clarified in multiple reports as well. That no organization knows how much data they're generating themselves. I mean, right from your, this, on which you have some corporate data, Pretty much everything is generating data for you. The second part is that, which you brought out, right? How much of that is a raw data? Because I know of a customer which I met last to last week, who's bought storage worth 12 petabyte, right? Because they're not sure right now what to keep, what not to keep. Yeah. Second. Because, and let's say if you have a view to that, let's assume the second issue that comes in is are my current tools covering that entire data estate? All of those have been bought as patchwork and truly speaking, I think they were right decisions at that time because there weren't solutions also which were planned like that, right? I was talking to him, he's got, he shared with me, he's using two backup solutions. I was sharing with you. I met a customer, he's got three clouds, he's using three native backups there, he's got an IBM infra, he's using IBM backup for that, for the balanced data center he's using Commvault. What insight would come out of that? Right? Then, if, if I say that, okay, I've covered all that, 
do I have the right roles within the organizations to enable this for me? Most of the organizations are clearly structured as infra, and that's a seller's issue as much as the uh, organizational issue. You've got infra people, uh, exception of your role, right? <laughs> right? Uh, that's, that's interesting to know the way you're driving that. But you have infra, you've got security, then you've got people who manage endpoints. Now, data is flowing across all of them. And that data is important, and that, that byte itself is traveling through all of them. But there's no single person who can really control and say that, you, want, you know, I want to do. So there's a lot of education required all the time. Oh, he's not doing it. Oh, that you, you've taken Office 365. That's managed by somebody else. And what about the data security? No, I just manage the data center security, uh, backup for data center, right? Then that is the question. So you start building that, and then you refer to the frameworks. Frameworks are very good to have and have a conversation about when it comes to implementation in an organization which has grown for a decade, it becomes impossible to implement, right? And then you struggle as a partner also with them, like somebody rightly said, we are not finding the right skill set. Because every organization has their own, in, with respect to data, they have so many nuances themselves that the replicability is also not that easy. I mean, you pick up one bank, and you think that you've done this here, you create it as a reference from the other, and you still struggle in the implementation there. Because that gentleman was using something else for his CBS, and they decided to go with something else. So I think one is the education part, but what I see very largely as a, as a challenge is the understanding at the topmost level on how he wants to drive this down the organization and enable the right set of people and give them the right authority right, and responsibility to carve it out. I, I mean, it's pretty much not a backup or a data conversation. It's pretty much a security conversation. Yeah. But I don't know in how many places uh, the security leaders are enabled to go across. I find situations where um, security leaders are fighting with the infra guy to have a global admin password. Why do they have an access to my data? Right. So. Some of them from a seller's perspective. Absolutely. Thanks. You know, so uh, while I might disagree on this uh, security piece, uh, Anish, so I have seen organizations now putting, so it's a boardroom discussion now. So many of them, uh, many of the C-suite is, is, is having discussions around security uh, with, with the entire team. Uh, but again, again the, the, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, as you said, the real the IT real estate is spread across, you know, data flowing from different points. That is a concern, and that that hits every organization across. Yes, sir. Okay, so I, I just wanted to add maybe what Anish you are alluding to. Even if the CISO is empowered, uh, but then you get inside. Do we have the right rigor available for the data security program? Is the moot question. So maybe, right. and I'll tell you, we are lots of organizations today sitting on absolute ticking bombs. Privacy comes around us in the same problem that Anish was alluding to. We have petabytes of data sitting with, and this is a classic problem we have created. I'm, I'm telling you, I have had IT life in the past. Uh, so we have created this problem partly because of we had very fragmented kind of storage, and then storage vendors came and said, no, no, we can give you tiered storage on your house. Have X petabytes of storage on your house. You don't even need to worry. Everything in house. <coughs> We have pushed everything. Now all that is mingled data, something which we need to retain. That's why I was stressing on the fact, while data, you say it is all data, but then there would be data which is differentiated, something you need to retain for 10 years, something you need to retain for eternity because there's a litigation on, something that you need to be able to delete and confirm. A person saying, forget me, exercised, you need to not just delete, from the entire enterprise and also provide a confirmation that I have deleted. So that visibility you don't have, you are sitting on a bomb. Because something happens, there's an investigation, the data found, you're sorted. Absolutely. So, yeah, probably just, just to add what Vikram said, right, and typical response as time is to that more aggressive control takes over, right? So the organization end up having all the data for entirety. 
yeah. right? Instead of kind of removing that data which is no longer needed, right? So that also adds pressure onto the ROI part of it. Absolutely, right. So you know, so the challenges remain, and these challenges have been there for long. You know, and they have just you know, increased in, uh, in in size and and magnanimity. So what what are your you know, if you had to look at building a cyber resilient organization, what is that? you would require and maybe Anish you could tell us how you are enabling that cyber resiliency for organizations. You know, what, what would let's be... Let's from that. Yes. And let's <laughs> add more to that. Otherwise it will look like a sales pitch, right? So I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't allow that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. So let me, let me initiate uh, and then probably I'll request all of us uh, to contribute. So fundamentally if I were to look at the entire challenge around data security, cyber security, data privacy, I think uh, we need to go back to the basics and uh, fundamentally identify as to what are the various levels of data, kind of data, do some classification, categorization, tagging of that data. <coughs> yeah. So as to really create a data warehouse and then probably look at it, okay fine, what kind of assets, what kind of data points, what kind of information is something that we want to secure, right. that we want to retain. Unfortunately, uh, we as an organization, we don't have that liberty or the luxury because we can't remove any data. Right? We have to retain the 185th year old data as well because we don't know as to how we can monetize that at any one point in time. And once it's printed, it's casted in stone, it has to be retained. Right? So we have to digitize that and then of course the journey starts. So fundamentally what I personally believe that yes, we should go back to the drawing board, create that framework and uh, Somewhere, I think we are lucky enough that yes, we have created that framework outside the IT domain so that the board or the so-called management committee looks at it totally differently. Absolutely. And there are no pressures of cost per se because end of the day it is the business which takes a call as to whether we want to secure that data or not. At what cost we have, we want to invest, we want to leverage, we want to monetize or we want to look at it in a totally different term. Paradigm. So, I think that's where we are. I think you rightly said, and just to add on worry, it's a mindset also. Like how, it's not one person can change the entire security paradigm over there. It's something that everybody have to take accountability because you never know who is storing the data at what form, at what form over there. Right. Take an example, if you just need to drain data for just three days, but you have not set the policy and you are keeping data forever over there. And nobody wants to take an ownership to delete the data, which he has not stored over there. So that's where we are increasing the attack service over there. We are putting lots of lots of data, which we eventually don't require. And just to keep safe ourselves, everybody <coughs> said that we don't want to delete the data, put it on Glacier, put it somewhere else over there. And that's where the data keep on increasing over there. So I think it's an everybody's responsibility over there. So whenever you set anything over there, whenever you bring something new over there, you have to be very clear what we need, what we don't need. Yes, I think, uh, like you said earlier, the scope of what we want to cover is very important. And uh, I think our goalpost is also changing yeah. quite a bit. And so we have to constantly keep a trap on it and keep, you know, uh, you know, giving that training back to the, you know, organization. For example, you know, this we, we are talking about all the generative AI stuff. Uh, you're seeing lot, not just the development team who is like, you know, coders and all, they're trying to use it, but also some of these business teams putting their Excel sheets or, or you know, with the, some of the data to that and bring the analytics out. So in a way, they're sharing organizations' key data on a platform which is further going to use the same data for some other purpose and going to be shared somewhere else. So unless our teams know, including business, marketing, operations, that, you know, what is the threat? So I think the training side is very essential and uh, and a constant training is very important uh, to, you know, make money. In some way, if, if, if my data transfer from A to the end point to even further sharing can be traced through some, you know, crypto uh, sort of a thing or sorry, some way where you know I can trace back my Excel sheet also in the detail that what was the origination point to how it traveled through. That would be something 
what I would be looking forward to, you know, at any point of the time. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Sort of planning, yeah. Right. Hi, uh, Deepak. So we started this discussion around 20 odd minutes back. So just had a good overview of in terms of what are the challenges that enterprises are facing in terms of data, and you know what would cyber resilience mean to them. So we'll come to you. I guess you know just settle down for a few minutes first. <laughs> right. Yes. Anyone else, please. Yeah. So you know, interesting. So while we are talking about data, uh, you know, and and talking about endpoints, nobody is mentioning the concerns around cloud. Uh, so is is that secure? No, I don't know. So because I, I didn't hear anything about the uh, that at all. The supply chain that we talk about is our softwares. These are all you know. SaaS. These are the ones that we are very vulnerable to the attacks. Attacks. And uh, and I think we we are. I mean, these days, you know. Our clients are not going to come to our systems. We have to get to their systems. Right. So we have to reach their systems. We have to get there. So systems to systems are talking. Most of our business happening system to system. Even the manual people in between for all the communication is gone. All systems talking where we are. It's a live thing. When we're talking to banks or these insurance companies, we're talking to their systems. Right. Right. And it has, needs to have those standards, 27001, VAPD, blah, 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 everything. <laughs> It needs everything to, to talk to them. And, 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 and I think, like I said, the goalpost is changing. So, you know, changing. Anish also mentioned that so too many tools, solutions coming into the picture. That also opens up a lot of loopholes. Right? Exactly. You know, yeah. because and in fact, today, very interesting. I mean, last night I got an email. It says that you give us the tool, next year, next year, whatever. I don't want to name the tools also. It says $3,500. You will get a patch. It will bypass everything. Give it a give it a give it a tool. We'll do it. Thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> I said, wow. That's a service. <laughs> That's a service. 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 Yeah, and I think, look, I mean, this is what uh, you know. When I was referring earlier, to this, <coughs> essentially, when we're talking about attack service, right, which is increasing, yeah. cloud. You're adopting cloud, right? You need to protect endpoints. There would be multiple vendors coming to you selling your solutions, be it endpoint detection response or a DLP or whatnot, yeah. right? Yeah. Then when it comes to cloud, you of course there are certain instances, uh, you know, workloads on the cloud. Yeah. You want to protect it, so the CASP and whatnot. I mean, all of those uh, yeah. vendors will come, will tell you a story that you need to protect this data, right? But look, essentially, what 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 needs to be understood is the security organization within an organization uh, within within the company is is the custodian of the data, right? The owner of the data is the business, right? right? Now, there has to be an alignment between the owner and the custodian, right? Yeah. Without two of both of them working together, it is impossible, it is essentially impossible to, to protect the data, right? Now, so what essentially can be done, right? You know, of course, in cloud, you would have seen there are a lot of developments happening. There is a CI, CD pipeline. How do we secure it? Does anybody talk about securing it? No, we'll run some VAPT scans or we'll just look at some of the configurations in the cloud and the security uh, team's job is done. That should not be the case. It's, uh, I mean, you need to shift left security, right? Yeah. You need to have your security processes being embedded Absolutely. with the business. Only then you will be able to protect these different surface of attacks and different threat vectors. That is how I think uh, you know, organizations should look at it, right? I take this thought forward uh, slightly. So if you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, so if you look at businesses today, I think there's once again acknowledgement to the fact that cyber security is not really a backroom agenda. It is boardroom and it is becoming boardroom because this is consequential. So if you are not doing this right, it can have a very direct impact on your business line, bottom line, top line, both. And we have seen numerous examples okay. of companies facing very, very grave challenges. They are both top line, bottom line, customers walking away, vendors not agreeing to work with you, all that is happening. So that's where there is acknowledgement. As in, uh, we do a survey globally, uh, a few thousand CEOs. Cyber security is one of the top five concerns for the last seven years. And more so with certain, you know, telling enterprises to report the incidents. Yeah, now. yeah. yeah. And, and which essentially translates to, in some organizations, in some mature organizations, the discussion has changed. Is, and that's why I was saying, extending this point, 
the data ownership is clearly defined to a senior business executive. Right. It is not just a CISO or CRO taking ownership. You first need to take ownership because identification has to happen there. What is the value of the data needs to happen there. Once that happens there, then we can really prioritize and right. say, this is now, we, when we have these discussions at a one down or two down level, classic discussion is, you need to segregate between what is important, what is sensitive for the organization. And on superficial level, no one knows about it. We use a very typical example all the time. You talk to the legal team, I'm taking one example, you talk to the legal team, tell them what is the most important document for them. They'll tell you, my case rulings is the most important document. As in, yeah, they need it on everyday basis, because that's how they are inferring and then taking decisions. But then, is it sensitive to organization? Absolutely not. Do we need to spend time, effort, money in protecting it? Absolutely not. If you lost, download it again. So that's a differentiation. It is important. No disagreement. It is important. But is it sensitive? Absolutely not. So that segregation has to happen. That will only happen once the business people are involved. We are doing the right governance and defining. And from tech community perspective, all of us in this table, we need to go after enabling the right visibility. If you don't have the right visibility, and of course, please engage people like us. We'll help you define the the data flow diagrams, the town jewels, and the, what are the use cases of information assets? Because those use cases would define how do we protect. What to protect, how to protect would come from there. But then sponsorship has to come from executive level, business executive. Right. Right. Yes. So we're at one point yeah. uh, about the visibility of data. Yeah. So data visibility is required. Initially, when we started <coughs> IT journey uh, 10 years back, then there was a uh, scope when we have a limitation inside data center only, on-premise. Yeah. If you talk about three years back when this pandemic situation happens, every user supposed to access their data from their local drives. Absolutely. So initially DLP and if you talk about the data protection, initially we refer to the protection only for backup and recovery purpose. Now, if, if we talk about this data protection domain, then it includes DLP, it includes backup and recovery, everything. So data scope uh, extended a lot, right? Every end devices will be laptop, even if we talk about the cloud service. So now data from on-premise to cloud and from endpoint, and which is rapidly growing, so that is the biggest challenge now uh, on top of that data governance. Yep. So data has grown a lot, so classification is required and data governance policy to be applied. Uh, the biggest challenge company like multinational companies, those are operating from like multiple countries, India, some of them have office in Europe. So they need to follow GDPR, they need to follow different compliance and different reasons. So there are so many challenges. Absolutely. So I, I'll probably address this one. Uh, maybe some part we discussed before you came in. So this, the, the concept, as if you look at the leakage, leakage, we, were, we used to talk about three channels, maybe four. So the endpoint would be there, network would be there, email would be there, and then the cloud to cloud. As in, those are the four channels that you need to protect. But then that's only leakage. Much before that, you need to have the discussion on discovery which is all encompassing. You need to have all unstructured data, PCs, file servers, all kind of devices. You need to have structured data, all sort of databases. I am even referring to semi-structure. All of us are going after digital transformation. We are saying, I'll create a data lake. You have created data lake, what all kind of data, as in depending on industry, we have IoT devices data stemming in. We have temperature, HVAC data coming in. We have data coming from various servers. We have all amalgamated. Now it is sitting together in the challenge that you are referring to, regulations, and we have business houses which are having 10 types of industries, and data is coming together. And those 10 types of industries have their own regulations, IRDA, RBI, SEBI, SECI, I don't know what all regulations would be applicable, you still need to have that visibility. That also is <coughs> you know, because everybody has a different... Uh, Structure to report it to. Absolutely. And the will go to try. Yes, no, initially. Yeah. That replicability is almost becoming impossible. Yeah. Across. So, and that's where, so when, if I go as a consultant somewhere, the starting point discussion I want to have is what are your replicable regulations? 
contractual compliances that you have. This is where you will start the journey. As in, protection will come much later. Let's really define what do you need to comply to, what do you need to manage. So, it could be contractual compli uh, compliances, it will be regulatory, it could be legal. As in, company act has to be done, data localization has to happen. We are saying fiduciary responsibility from sovereignty of data. Right. There are 100 things which need to be looked into, then only you start defining the policies. Policies come much later. Same statement that started. You add a tool to a broken process, you are just rushing to the failure. But, but I think uh, one, one interesting observation that I've had uh, uh, during my various conversations with the clients, that when it comes to regulatory compliances, right, you always get a buy-in from the top leadership. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right? You have money coming in yeah. because one, there's a cost to, uh, you know, not meeting the compliance. Yeah. And then there is business yeah. implications yeah. as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you can't do business in Europe if you're not compliant with it. So that is all, you know, taken care of. Yeah. I think as a security professional, why we understand our business, we know how to protect data, you know, after of course, you know, having uh, the visibility on the data, having all the governance models. The challenge which which I, uh, you know, understand, which I understood from them is that there are essentially not, while you said, you know, it's a C-suit uh, discussion point these days, cyber security, but it's again compliance driven. It's because it's there in the Companies Act, right? It's because, you know, Sevi is talking about it, right? That's why it's a boardroom conversation. And it is only restricted to, okay, have a cyber security audit being planned as part of your internal audit agenda and drive it. Unless and until as security professionals, we convince the board or the, you know, top management that there is a value, you know, that you can drive from this data. It can add to your top line, right? Unless and until we do that, it's always going to be challenging, right? Because like you said, DLP, this solution, that solution, you need budgets for that. And as security professionals, it's our job to get those budgets approved. And that can only happen if we sensitize them that it can be monetized. Right? You have, you are sitting on a lot of data. You can monetize it, be it in the form of a customer trust, right, which can, I mean, if it's a B2C business, you can onboard many customers if you have a secure application, as simple as that, right? Uh, or, I mean, if you, if you need to monetize it in another way, for example, usage of generative AI is happening today. Right? You're generating a lot of content on the data that you've collected. You're not only collecting data, you're generating data today. How do you monetize it? We need to start having those conversations at the top leadership level to you know, get those buy-ins so that you can protect the data because you have the budget to do it. Absolutely. Just to add one yes. point, uh, we are putting the data not specific on specific locations only. We are putting it everywhere, like if we talk about cloud, and user device, one try, boxes, and on-premises. So visibility is biggest challenge, and top of that, uh, ensuring the security is the second one. Yeah. So Ankit, uh, end of the day, you know, it's all about that culture change that you are referring to. Absolutely. You know, while you said that yes, everything is top down, but uh, please understand that itself is culture change yeah. because yeah. earlier the so-called government, the central bodies that we have, whether it is the Ministry of ID or Director of uh, IT in India, you know, they never pushed it down to our throats, right? We as organizations, but it is happening, number one. Number two, I guess, uh, thankfully to pandemic, and uh, sorry if I may be the, you know, devil in the room, but thankfully to pandemic, IT is no longer a cost center. So the boardroom con uh, conversations are changing, and today IT or technology team, uh, you know, I don't even refer to IT, IT per se, but the technology leadership is looked upon as a business enabler, right. and that is what is helping or aiding us to drive those conversations in the right manner to circumnavigate the so-called data privacy or the threat part of it, and that's where the budgeting uh, budgets or you know so-called investments are coming in. So I think things are changing, and I'm a very optimistic person that way. That yes, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years you will see a turnaround. Yeah. The way we uh, look at investments from uh, information, not just information security, but the overall enterprise security. Because IT is just part of the overall enterprise security. So I think things are changing. Absolutely, Tej. So on that change piece, so Tata Steel was the first company to report on the exchanges that they've been attacked. So that's a big change because we have never seen uh, Indian companies 
reporting to the exchange, you know, with, that they have been Now attacked. it's not by choice. choice. <laughs> <laughs> but many of them still not, uh, so, they are still not reporting. So my dear friend, on the lighter side of it, I think we did report that. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think just to add to what Tejveer said, uh, you know, we as a digital uh, practice um, have committed certain numbers to the top line what we will add mm -hmm. right. in next uh, few years, right? And manufacturing traditionally is considered down the maturity level, right? right when it comes to cyber, right? And probably we could be the we could be the uh, you know the late starter in it, right? But I think that is really driving that overall conversation and the boardroom conversation what's happening, right? So uh, you know adding that certain numbers to it, then effectively looking into what can impact that particular commitment and this is where the the cyber or the information security do come but I completely agree right so for us also it's a journey which is while there is a uh, there is a clear understanding that it is important but again who bells the cat right <laughs> <laughs> The other ones. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we we need it, but uh, no, uh, probably the 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 restriction or rather that control should start from the next one, is always a mindset. But I think we are moving into that direction. Yeah. Uh, no, so as a trend, I can tell you, we we speak to numerous customers. I can tell you, we definitely get to see the trend that data and analytics is becoming. People are happy to invest endless dollars, endless dollars. Because they clearly see this is a strategy, this would be a differentiator. If we are at playing at level X field and manufacturing in all types of industries, I mean not just manufacturing, we interact with all types of industries, all business leaders are happy to invest in data analytics, but only that. I think the next wave which has to happen is data security also. So today, they are pumping big money on how do we get intelligence out of the data that we have and maybe collate some data that we are not collating today. Some very, very impressive use cases. I mean, all of you would have heard about use cases in uh, the shopping, etc. They are monitoring how many seconds people are staying in front of a cage. In basis that decision can be taken, what needs to be prioritized in front cages, so on and so forth. So those use cases are only can be enabled once you have right data and control of data, analysis of data. So there they are pumping money, but now the next layer has to happen, data security, which is realization happening because of regulations, but then it also needs to become a realization that if you don't do this, all of that can also be jeopardized, which is the top layer that you're creating. So we started with cyber resilience, moved into compliance, came back to cyber resilience. So for the awareness part, I can say that in last four months, Every conversation that I've had with a leader, he's always told me, you come to me for backup, I don't have a single dollar. You come to me for cyber resiliency, we can have a conversation. And what has happened is that one example sets it up for the entire vertical. We had example in pharma, I don't want to name, and you had conversations with everybody else starting around that. So, what I see is that awareness is definitely coming, but people are trying to find ways and means, and that's where organizations like you or your, your organization can come in. Where uh, we are not just talking about uh, security, right? We are talking about a strategy and a cultural change, yeah. right? So I think the zero trust principles that everybody describes in different way, but they almost mean the same thing. Uh, which is something like, do it, but verify it, verify it again, don't trust anybody, right? Basis that, uh, most of the organizations have started working on a zero loss strategy. What can they do about that, right? And that's where all these frameworks of uh, NIST or MITRE, they come into picture, which have to be personalized for organization. That's where consultants come in and they help make it very specific to the organization. It is otherwise you will miss out some portions of the organization and then again, it's a, your quote, right? You're rushing towards failure with, the, with putting the right tool in the wrong place. So having said that, I think when we deliver all this through a multi-layered security framework, right? Various tools, right? Through multi-layered security framework, we're able to at least get a 
proper uh, governance model and a proper monitoring model, if I may say so, for the organization. That's one. The second part is the visibility part that was brought in. In fact, I missed out the education part that you brought in, right? So education part is one part which has to be constantly focused upon. I'll give you an example for the company that I come from. We are, I've been totally in the IT life and we used to run phishing attacks internally just to test. And you will be surprised that more than 50% people who are supposedly are selling this to their customers are themselves opening this up themselves. So education never should never stop, right, that part. But coming back, so end-to-end, -end, one is the movement of data. Once we know with what our data state is, that is very important. Then monitoring that end-to-end, -end, we need to have a tool for that. And ensuring that it is visible throughout its journey while it is encrypted, and then the data tools for analytics, they're already there, by the way. Which, it's just that their consumption wasn't to that level it should have been, the way it is being done by business, because there's, they see dollars. When they see that if I make this change and I put it, there's so many dollars, this is the increased footfall that I see. But now that awareness is coming in, that how do I manage my data state? Right? And how do I see the entire information moving across? What are the changes that have happened? The third thing is, try to get a platform in. Because till you have a platform kind of a solution, and I'm not referring just to us, but anybody, the lesser number of vendors you have in your environment, the better analytics, the deeper analytics you can run, and more sense you can draw out of them. Right? So that is one. And that also applies to the other tools that you buy, see the ones which have the, the broadest coverage because that helps the point number two which I mentioned. If you have tools which are very specific only to cloud, for example, environment, right, or which is very specific to a traditional environment, then you are stuck with that. You will also always have an option for going, there will be not a single platform ever, right, but as few as we can is very important. Because then when we drive those analytics, we can take more decisions which are more intelligent and will be more accurate. Even if, so I heard one gentleman saying that today if I am able to take a, a proactive action which is even 50% accurate, it is much better than me going blind. Yeah. That also helps. So education, and this is from my point of view, right? Education is important, visibility, and then end-to-end -end visibility, then tools which monitor the changes which go across, analytics, fair level of analytics, providing you the ability to see that, okay, this is 10-year-old data, I've never touched it so far, and nobody's touched it, should I really be keeping it on my hot storage right now? Should I move it, move it to a immutable somewhere else where it's okay if I can get the data back in some time, etc. And then, you know, this simple ease of management, because we are just building in more complexity, we're getting more tools, integrates into one of the larger platforms that you're running, which is either running your SOC or whatever your larger platform is, that integration of this tool into that itself. Yes, to add one point. Earlier, this, this backup solutions, uh, disk-based backup pollution adopted by majority of people since the last five years. After this COVID scenario, when security incident rise, then people hear, people realize that we should move to towards tape backup again, considering the offline copy. So now people, majority of the people adopted this technology. Even if you look at the Gartner report, IBM uh, sold so many tape libraries. In the time. So offline backup and the backup versus disk base, they have a pros and cons, but still uh, people are referring that as well. So there are many solutions now available. Uh, I mean, you have virtual tape libraries also, but instead of that, there are, it's all about having immutable storage, that three to one principle we have, the, first, the last one that we talk about, an offline copy, immutable, many options available today you necessarily don't have to go back in technology right to have a secure untouched data somewhere right that can be managed today we can talk during the networking time Manish. Yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> it's 
I mean, most most of the time, what we are seeing, uh, you know, some of the companies. I mean, I don't want to name some hospitals and others got attacked. Uh, I think, and the learning from that was the systems and everything. River, you know, bringing back the business to the normal. Uh, you know, in, in nowhere the BCP had all these things, uh, but. Uh, from 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 bringing business back to the normalcy, what sort of a you know incident response system, and is there any you know, sort of a guideline? Is there any sort of a support, or is there any you know something that's Commvault is kind of you know helping on that? So yes, there are multiple ways we can address this, right? And I good you brought this point because I missed adding it last time is testing your environment continuously yourself of what what so if you go by board they would want zero downtime but not possible to achieve right so uh, <clears throat> your most recent RTO right and your so uh, the as recent RPO as possible and almost a minute worth of RTO is possible today with different solution environments. But the important part is whatever you bought, how regularly do you test that? Usually that is left out because of the complexity of the testing itself. Nobody wants to give that time. So how simplified can be your recovery testing is something that you should be looking at not just us while we have that solution right on helping our customers um, continuously keeping on testing right with how much time does it take for me to come back and fortunately I did not hear of a single customer within the Commvault environment who got attacked and did not recover back to the business in a very short time I mean where the business really got impacted in fact we got a lot of references because of that right of having done that but the important part like I said we have tools available for your testing and that regular testing there's some DR key drill DR drill used to happen yeah. right this is also possible sure. your attack simulate an attack and do a recovery how much time does it take for you so more than this recovery I think the patching where is that tap where is that leakage where is that you know bandage <laughs> So that visibility, like I mentioned, so the three points that I mentioned are available as a solution today, right? So we have tools which will help you discover your data because what is central to common solutioning is, and we've got tech experts they can add, right, is the indexing part. I mean, I can pride myself in saying that we do that the best, right? So indexing the data the moment it gets generated ensures that we are able to track it all throughout and if there's any change that happens to that right we are immediately able to understand that here is possibly where we need to stop it or this is the good data this is the bad data that segregation can be automated completely if, from a recovery perspective if Manish maybe your question is broader than data so there are uh, of course there will be components or things that you need to consider from a uh, visibility not just for data but then enterprise visibility, EDR, same etc. would come into play. And that's where uh, in advice to a CISO, uh, supremely simplified version for cyber security, only focus on two things. One, when you're saying hacker, my environment is difficult to penetrate, one item. Second item, only second item, two items. Second. If there's a compromise, I'm able to bounce back quickly. Sure. You sort two, you're doing the job well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. My second question was on the second. Yeah. Bounce back. So, subsequent to that, we have seen investments across the board, right? Yeah. In various forms or shape, whether it is the NOx, the SOX, the tools, the technologies to identify, look at threat, yeah. intelligence, analysis, on top of it, and then looking at services from different partners, you know, with different skill sets. Where does it stop and where do I see the return of my investment? No, it does not stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so where does it stop in the sense, where does it stop in, in terms of investing in various other technologies? So, and let's say if I am looking at Comward and if Anish is saying that yes, they have the entire platform, 
what is the return of investment which I've already done. Yeah, so they are, they are two different things there. Sorry, I, I, I need to, yes. uh, Anish, please add. So, look, this you need to, and everyone, not just yeah. you as an individual, everyone needs to see this. No, this question a, is on behalf of everyone, uh, because probably so, not everyone is asking it. But. So this is an infinite game. So, yeah. cyber security is an infinite game. You need to remain at it. So, there is no final destination where you say that now this is a full stop. So you would need to remain until you are in business, you would need to remain at it and remain engaged. That's one. The return on investment on individual solutions, that can be derived, as in you can go after it. It may not be black and white saying six months you are breaking even or whatever. But then what you need to is in measure it from a efficacy and maturity perspective. Over a period of time, if you have adopted five solutions, has your maturity gone up from, and there are models, from 2.x to 3.x or whatever. So if that is happening, I think that's that's right, you are getting the return of investment. For individual solutions to create a ROI may not be possible. Even for all the security portfolio, ROI will not be in picture. Let's take example of antivirus codec. So now all the key players are out of picture. <coughs> they have been replaced by the new players. Yeah. And earlier we were paying 1,000, now we are paying I agree I, and I understand that and that is one of the challenges you know which probably when you go back to the board this is one of the basic question which the board may ask because they are ignorant of the fact that yes it is a continuous process as Vikram just mentioned for them it's an investment right so that awareness that uh, kind of making them up to the speed on the knowledge from an enterprise security perspective. There are different challenges, multiple challenges. While I understand all of that, but yes, somewhere down the line, that framework has to be built in place so that yes, here it is, sir. So <laughs> I'll just make two points but, to that. Yeah, I think Ankit has no, a very small point. Uh, look, I mean, ROI, like uh, who's saying, is pretty difficult, right, when we look at the solution level. But whenever you know you are implementing any solution, you can always look at the overall TCO, right? That is something you can control. That is something you can reduce. You can always because look the way all organizations have grown, legacy systems, we move to the you know security solutions. Then you're talking about cloud adoption, some of the cloud security solutions you've invested, right? There are lot of overlaps where the rationalization can happen. So whenever you are procuring any solution. Right, in some part or in some bits, you have some solution which is safeguarding or probably achieving some part of the objective that you know that solution is addressing. So always an answer the question that what kind of a TCO reduction you can aim for, and that is that is that is something which can, which can be calculated, right? That you can take to the board and say these are the benefits that I'm going to pass on to you. In, in slightly early days uh, and only relevant for very mature organizations. So then cyber risk quantification is becoming a topic. Lots of people are wanting to talk about it. If we go that direction, if we are able to quantify the risk, then of course the investments also can be easily justified. It's already this, I can tell you. And I think board has already answered the same situation earlier. I mean, although we are talking cyber security today, but think of the legacies, you know, these businesses, whether manufacturing or something else. You know, they saw that unless we adopt a newer technologies, we will not get that kind of efficiency. We will not get to the next level. Otherwise, we'll be out of the competition. They saw that. They they adopted newer machineries, for example, and then they saw digital coming. They adopted digital. Now they are seeing if we will not adopt to the cyber security, there's a <coughs> there's a risk. So yeah, and with that risk comes cyber the insurance as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. They they have not been so kind talking about cyber. <laughs> I just was going to say that that we have a CISO in the room. He can tell us right whether he still gets budget or it's an open purse, right for him. No, I think uh, as I was saying earlier, there is a positive conversation. Until the conversation is positive. So <laughs> to your point, let me summarize. But so I think things are things are definitely better. That's yes. what I would say. There is always a pressure. I think they they will keep pressure, uh, like. Uh, every other domain on, on on the cost part of it, and that really that really pushes us as well to think through, optimize, right? Otherwise, we will also, I think, end of the day, we will also start putting lots of agents into it because there's a uh, no, uh, in, in finite budget, right? So that also really pushes us to 
get our act well together. So I think that way things are better. So I think uh, it got answered in few parts for you, but let me just put that together. So this investment that we're doing, obviously, uh, there's no ROI you calculate for that. You do a TCO comparison, a relative TCO comparison, but the ROI really comes from what you enable. Your ability to have a very different and agile business model just because you did this or you enable this is where your return comes from. And I think for the first time you will have to justify, but they're such sharp minds, they it gets one once it gets in, they understand. And and this is from my con conversation with some of the CISOs now, that the mindset has changed so much that the business today comes to us and says that I'm wanting to do this. What is the element of risk you want to see if I was to go ahead with? It has reached to a level, Tejvir, where in my previous roles, I never, never had seen an IoT guy talking to me. It's reached the operational technology level. They're concerned now that we are investing in IoT. And you would know one of the very large PSUs today has actually floated a POC tender for testing IoT security before they embed that in their furnaces and their refineries. Risks are huge. Right? So everybody understands and they've got budget available. You run the POC. Imagine POC, he's doing POC, it's a paid POC, and he's asked every vendor to come and I am even skeptical of running that POC right now. Right. So, so the conversation is that it is getting enabled and it is not such a difficult conversation anymore, right? Uh, once, once you through. Again, it depends. For example, for us, content is everything. And at the moment we are looking at even a tiniest bit of a POC using IoT at that content-driven workflow, oh, it's scary. So, I can relate to the entire scenario per se. Right, I, I, I know the discussion can can extend, you know, go beyond, <laughs> beyond an hour's time, but I think we are overshot the time. Thank you everyone. Anish and his team is here. So any questions, any, uh, you know, queries that you have, I'm sure Anish and his team would be happy to take that. Uh, please do join us for uh, dinner and cocktails. Thank you once again for being here. It was a pleasure having this conversation with all of you. Thank 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 you.